And, and even though we are blessed, we shouldn't take things for granted. Because life is like a wave. It comes in and goes out, comes in and goes out. So we always have to put our lives in the hands of the Almighty God. In the hands of the one who created us, who knows our tomorrow, which we don't know. And who knows the end from the beginning. He knows it all around. So without much ado, let us um, do our declarations and pray and get it going. It's an exciting day. It's a beautiful day. Glory be to Jesus. Glory, glory, glory be to Jesus. All right. The declaration of today is from Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41 is a bit long, but I will read from verses 8 to 14. Let's read and then meditate on it and pray with it. Let's go. But you, Israel, are my servant. Jacob, whom I have chosen, the descendants of Abraham, my friend. God calling a man a friend. That's awesome. Verse 9. You whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest regions and said to you, You are my servant. I have chosen you and have not cast you away. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand. Behold, all those who were incensed against you shall be Ashamed and disgraced, they shall be as nothing, and those who strive with you shall perish. You shall seek them and not find them. Those who contended with you, those who war against you, shall be as nothing, as a non existent thing, for I the Lord your God will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. Fear not, you warm Jacob, you men of Israel. I will help you, says the Lord, and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Glory, glory, glory be to God in the highest. Thank you, Jesus. Are we ready? Looks like Facebook is not on. If it's, if it's not on, then switch it on. Then give me. That's fine. Glitch, glitch, glitch. Let's pray. Let the people the people on Facebook are there is there any 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 comment on Facebook? No. So I go out and come back in. Whatever you are doing, I think you are not live. Then shut it down and start again. Oh. Minister of the Living Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, you are live. Technical error. Let's give it a moment.
tell me when we are live on Facebook. In the ministry page, yeah. Now there's a notification. Yeah, so we, now you now you are live before you were not live. No, there was no notification. So something happened. All right, all right. Thank God it's just at the beginning. Let us start all over again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Those are the days that you know that God has something important to talk to you about. Don't be ignorant of the enemy's devices. It looks so real. It looks so that, you know... That happened, don't, it's not a coincidence. You are bringing God into the scene. Something must happen. Remember when Jesus told his disciples, let's go over to the other side. Jesus knew what he was going to face. The disciples had no clue. Jesus being confident of what daddy told him. He went and lied and put his head very peacefully on a pillow, and he slept. He slept. And before you knew it, the enemy started throwing tantrums. There was tumult on the sea. And they came. Oh, Lord, don't you care that we are perishing? Jesus is like, what, what's wrong with you? Where's your faith? What's wrong with you? I told you, let's go over to the other side. Why? Because on the other side, life, something very, very important was going to happen. So the enemy had to come in and make, you know, throw in that confusion and, and try to do as if, oh, there's storm. There was no storm. It was just the devil, the devil himself. And today we cast you out right now in Jesus' name. You have no place here. You have no power over our live stream. You have no power over the ministry of the living Jesus. You have no power over anyone that is here that wants to receive from the Most High God. So let us start. Let us start again. What's going on still? Uh huh. All right, very well, very well done, very well done. So it's still looking like we are far from starting today. I think you should get up and do it, CJ, so that we get this thing done right away. You see, there must be something. There must be something that God is releasing today. You go and do it. You go and do it. We want to get on today. Since you better you better start praying. Everybody pray in tongues. The enemy is on a rampage. Santa Ramashe is Kalama Sanctum. Ziba 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 Rigaroda Azakata. Never take God's work for granted. This is not a show. This is not uh, a, a just any broadcast. This is the word of God. This is Jesus about to speak the eternal word of God. And there's someone that needs the word of today. And that is why the enemy is totally, totally unhappy. But who cares? Who cares? Jesus conquered the enemy. Jesus conquered death. He conquered the grave, he conquered it all. He, rest, he brought back life and he gave that life to you and I and said, go in my name. So today we rebuke the enemy in the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. We command, we declare that these lines are clear. Everything is perfect. Everything is connected. The people will receive. I speak peace into the atmosphere. In the matchless name of Jesus, Sandara Marco Sarata, 
Father, I declare peace in the hearts of your people. I declare peace throughout the airwaves. I declare peace wherever we are. Peace in Jerusalem in the name of Jesus. They that pray for the peace of Jerusalem will have peace. We receive peace right now because we are praying for Jerusalem. We are praying for God's people in Jesus' name. Amen. Are we ready to start now? Close down any app that is not useful right now. Remove your phone from that place and let us carry on. Finally. All right. Let's go back to our declaration. Isaiah chapter 41, declaring from verse 8 to 14. So let the heavens hear, for I will speak, and let the earth hear, for I will speak. The word of God is coming out like dew. It must water and it must cause to grow in Jesus' name. God's word never goes out and comes back to him void. We are declaring, we are sending out, we are releasing the word of God right now. And it must reproduce for his glory and for our benefit. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Isaiah 41 from verse 8 to verse 14. But you, Israel, are my servant. Jacob, whom I have chosen, the descendant of Abraham, my friend. You, whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest regions, and said to you, You are my servant. I have chosen you and have not cast you away. Fear not, for I, I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Behold, all those who were incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be as nothing. And those who strive with you shall perish. You shall seek them and not find them. Those who contended with you, those who war against you, shall be as nothing, as a non-existent thing. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. Fear not, you warm Jacob, you men of Israel. I will help you, says the Lord, and your Redeemer, the Holy One, of Israel. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you this morning. We come to you by the power of your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Father, we understand according to Psalm 122 that you have commanded us to pray for Israel, especially at a time like this that they are going through rains of missiles. And you you asked us to pray, and you say, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. So you declare that when we pray for Jerusalem, we will prosper. Peace be within your walls. Prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brethren and companions, I will now say, peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Father, we seek the good of Jerusalem. You say you are the Holy One of Israel. And as we pray for Israel, we are praying for ourselves simultaneously. You say whatever we give up, that's what we will receive. So Lord, right now, even with the tumult on these airwaves, Lord, we speak peace over Jerusalem. We speak peace within the walls of Israel. 
And the same way we release peace to the world, the same way we will have peace, the, the stream will go peacefully. Every, every heart will receive this in peace because our Jehovah Shalom, Jesus Christ, Lord of all lords, King of all kings, God of all gods, Jesus Christ is Jehovah Shalom, the Prince of Peace. We speak peace in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. What a stormy beginning that tells you that something good is going to happen to you today. Just buckle your seat belt and let's take a jolly, but maybe tumultuous ride. Who knows? If there is turbulent in the air, buckle your seat belt. All right. Our main reading of today is coming from the epistle of Paul to the Colossians. Let's go. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 to 23. Colossians 1, 9 to 23. And it reads, and I'm using the New King James Version. You can use any version. It's the same Bible. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, that version, that version is the same word. Because it is Spirit uh, um, given. It's given by the Spirit. When you read by the Spirit of the Almighty God, the Holy God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Spirit of the living Jesus, he will make it known to you. It is Spirit breathed. It's not in, in the mind area. So, Let's go. Colossians 1 from verse 9. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Verse 11, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. Verse 15, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. And in him all things consist. Verse 18, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to him, by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Verse 21. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy 
and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. May the Lord bless his word. May he give us insight to his word. May he settle our hearts to receive the word that he has for us today. And may there be peace in all the earth. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Let's carry on. From what we just read, I don't see how, I don't know if you notice how many times it's all about him. It's all about him. He made all things, all things consist in him. Him, meaning Jesus Christ of Nazareth, King of the Jews, the Messiah, the one that came, the one that is, and the one that is to come. All eyes are waiting on him and the enemy that doesn't want you to know that is fighting you. So this word, this word of God that became flesh and came to earth in human form, the visible image of the invisible God, the word of God made flesh. Today, we are talking about him. Of course, we are talking about him, Jesus. He is the conquering word. That's the title of our message of today, the conquering word, Marco Sarata. This word conquers. In the morning, he conquers. When you are sick, he conquers. When you are poor, he conquers. Whatever the situation is, the word of God is the conquering word. So let us see what the word is going to conquer in your heart today. Let us see what the word is going to conquer in your life today. Let us see what the the word is going to conquer within your communities, within your families, in your life today. Let us open up to the sweet presence of the Holy Spirit and let the power of God, the word of God, conquer something in our lives today all this raging this morning it needs it has to be conquered you wake up you think oh you went to bed you had plans the following day before you know things start to happen conquer it by the word of god so let's look at the conquering word that's our title for today Once we grasp that Jesus has the preeminence, that all things consist in him, he made all things. Nothing can be done outside of Jesus. I don't care where you go. I don't care what religion you think you are religioning. Yeah, it's a new English. What can I say? (laughs) Find your life in Jesus. He died for you. This is not a joke. It's not a joke. Jesus died for everyone that has ever lived, that is alive and will ever live. It is a mystery and unless your heart is true, unless you you, you are seeking the truth, you will never find it. Unless you want to know the truth, you won't find. And don't tell me, oh, I was born here, I was born there, my parents were doing. No, 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 it's about you. It's your heart, not your father's heart, not your mother's heart, not your, not your, your tradition or, or, or whatever, or tribe. It's not, none of it. You are telling yourself a lie if you are blocking your ears to what you are listening to now. So just open your heart and receive the truth. It's your choice 
You will be judged by your choices. You will be judged by your choices. You will have nobody to blame. There have been preachers for centuries. The Bible is free. You can download it. There are many different apps in all kinds of languages. Download it and read. Find out the truth. Whatever you read, look for the truth in it. If your heart is right, you will find the truth. This is not forcing anybody. You make a choice and you live by the the, the choices you make. Full stop. In everything in life, whatever. You choose a career, (laughs) that's what you live by. It's a choice. All right. Colossians 4, verse 2 to 4. I'm stressing the fact that once we grasp what we are talking about today that the enemy is trying to to disturb. Once Once you grasp it, you are free. You're free in your mind. You're free in your in your thinking, you are free, you are, you are just free, you are liberated. Nothing can hold you down. Because Paul is saying there in verse 4, he says, pray. No, I'm talking about Colossians 4 now, yeah? Not, not the one we just read. 4 verse 4, yeah? Pray. That I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. That means nothing can, nothing should stop you from speaking the truth if you know the truth. Okay? If you read verse 3, it says, Meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the word. To speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in chains. Okay? So he's in chains, but he says those chains will not stop me from doing what, or should not stop me from doing what I'm supposed to do. That's why he says in in Colossians 4.4, chains or no chains, tribulation or no tribulation, Background or no background, tribal uh, religion or no tribal religion. Pray that I may make it manifest. Make the truth manifest as I ought to speak, not according to my circumstance. I have to do it right, no matter what. Your circumstance should not determine what your life is. You should determine your life, not your circumstance. Don't live according to circumstance. Don't live under the circumstance. Just live life. Make up your mind and live it. Paul says there, pray that I will proclaim this message as clearly as I ought or as I should, not according to the dictates of the flesh. Not according to these chains. Not, oh God, get me out of prison because I'm your servant. None of that. Paul says, I, it, it, what I'm speaking is, they are mysteries. And whether I'm in chains or not, I must speak the truth. So pray for me that I will release that word like it needs to be released. Don't sit down and cry, oh God, I'm in trouble. You know, get me out of it, I'm your servant. No. We must learn to distinguish the fact that we could very well be in prison for the benefit of another person. It's not about you being in prison. It's about you maintaining the godly attitude. If Paul hadn't been in prison, would you be reading this now? To ask for that discernment. Why am I here? Why am I going through what I'm going through? And always remember, you are going through it. You are not stuck in it. As long as you are 
walking in the path of righteousness. So you are walking. You are going through it. You might as well be in prison for the benefit of others. Not because you have done something wrong. So ask for that spirit of discernment. When I'm preaching the word of God and I'm being persecuted, is it because I've done something wrong? No, it's just because the enemy doesn't want you to to hear the, the word of truth. So that you will perish in hell with him. That's why Psalm 44 verse 22 says, For your sake we are killed all day long. Paul mentioned that as well. For the sake of others, those who are in the forefront are being killed all all day long. So whatever you are going through might be because you are a leader and you are doing it to benefit others. Let us train our minds to always remember that it's not about us. It is all about Jesus. He is the conquering word. He is the living word. He is the word of God. It is not about what the flesh is feeling. Once you start talking about feeling, then check it. Oh, I don't feel like. That doesn't count. Once you start to think like that, then check it. Rather, pray to God to help you see the truth in whatever situation you are going through. If it doesn't feel good in the flesh, to the flesh. Paul said he's in prison, but prison or no prison, chains or no chains, he has a mystery to release to the world. So he says, pray. That I, I, I speak it, I release it as I ought, not according to how I feel. All right. Let us link this to what we were discussing last week. Let us link it. We'll come back to it. Because, yeah, last week we dealt with the title, Will You Marry Me? That's the question from Jesus to you. He's not asking about uh, uh, come and go when you feel like. He says, are you sticking it out with me for better, for worse? Jesus is asking you and I that question, will you marry me? Will you be one with me? Do you want to be bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh? Are you ready to stick this thing out with me? To agree with me? He is God. If you want to fight him, go ahead. If you don't want to have anything to do with him, then just leave it. He is not forcing you either. But if you stick it out with him, Remember, he's God, and he owns the whole earth. All heaven, all earth, and everything under the earth. Visible or invisible, we just read in Colossians. Do you truly want to answer to my name? That's what Jesus is saying. Are you ready to actually bear my name? Or do you want you just want to hear about Jesus and Have him as a a distant knowledge. Okay. The illustration we used last week was Ruth the Moabites. To the world, Ruth was insignificant. Nobody knew her. Imagine a young woman from Moab. Who knew her? Nobody. To the Jewish world, Ruth was a foreigner. 
a foreigner to the covenant, had nothing to do with the people of Israel. To the world, Ruth was a young widow with hardly any prospects. I want you to see all the things that were working against Ruth. To the world, to her friends, to her families, Ruth's story was nothing to write home about. <laughs> it's over. She married some Jewish guy. He died. She had no children for him. That's it. No posterity, no continuation. The story is ended. Nothing to write home about. Until... <laughs> until the all-surpassing power of God invaded her circumstance. Until. Shall we go to the story of Ruth today? Let's go to Ruth. I want us to see the conquering word. How the word can conquer in your life. How the word conquered for Ruth. Against all odds, even though her physical circumstance had nothing good to say about her. Ruth chapter 1, verse 19 to 22, we shall read now. Now the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem, and it happened when they had come to Bethlehem that all the city was excited because of them. And the women said, Is this Naomi? But she said to them, Do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord has brought me home again empty. Why do you call me Naomi, since the Lord has testified against me, and the Almighty has afflicted me? Verse 22, so Naomi returned, and Ruth, the Moabites, her daughter-in-law with her, who returned from the country of Moab. Now they came to Bethlehem. At the beginning of barley harvest. All right, let's look at this spiritually. Naomi wanted to sneak back into Jerusalem because she thought, mm, My life is over. It's, God has dealt terribly with me. See, when bad things happen, it's always God to blame. Let us learn. She wanted to sneak in. But God didn't listen to her cry of bitterness. God announced their return. All she thought was, everything was, is, is against me. Let me just sneak back to my old house, if I can still find it. Remember they were gone for years to Moab. But as they returned, they right there in verse 19, he says, And it happened when they had come to Bethlehem that all the city was excited because of them. You see, they wanted to sneak in. At least Naomi, Ruth knew what she was doing. She was purposeful in love. But Naomi was bitter. But God announced their return because when the world says there's a casting down, the Spirit of God says there's a lifting up. That's why your eyes must be on Jesus, not on your circumstance. God announced their return. And all the city was excited because of them. The, the last thing they expected. Hmm. 
because Naomi did not understand the plan of God concerning her life. All she was dealing with was this physical circumstance. I said earlier, according to Colossians 4.4, 4, your suffering is not about you. Start to get it. We are killed all day long. For your sake, we are killed all day long. Your suffering is not about you. Your suffering has to be a testimony for others. Use your pain to bless God, to bless people. Because if you are going through something, that means there's a greater glory waiting for you at the end. You wouldn't be reading about Paul today if he hadn't gone through all that he went through. So even Naomi, she thought she lost it all. So today I'm telling you, if you are not emptied out and you claim to be walking with Jesus, then you will take his glory. You will take his glory. Christ was emptied out for you and I. Therefore, in order to follow him, we must first allow him, him to empty us. Don't go and give all that you have and punish yourself and say, oh, I'm following Jesus. I have to be poor. <laughs> That will not do you any good. If you are emptying yourself, then you are just doing it for your own glory. Oh, let people see that I'm worshiping God. I have given away all that I have. Listen to what God is telling you to do. If he tells you, go to, who knows, America, then go to America. If he tells you, Stay in your country. Then stay in your country. Let him be your managing director. Let him be the one who is re releasing the instruction to you and you just obey. Will you marry me for better, for worse? Don't go and do things in the flesh. Punish yourself and say you are serving God. When you never heard from God. Then you then the, you have received your own benefit. People will clap for you and say, oh, well done. But where is Jesus in it? No, it's always, it always has to be about Jesus. He died for you. You haven't died for yourself yet. You, if you die for yourself, you're just going to hell. If you do it on your own. Because your sins, you die in your sin. All right. Give him the glory. He died for the whole world. When God asks you to do something and you do it in obedience, even though it hurts, then you will receive his reward. <laughs> and trust me, his reward is always astronomical. His reward is always huge. Better than you can think of or imagine. His reward is always enormous, gigantic, whatever word you want to use. When you obey and walk in his instructions. It has to be out of this world. Because the world does not understand it. God's ways are out of this world. It's not written in any book that you will read. No, 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 no. This one is not taught in schools. It's given to you direct. Because you have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with him. It is a God thing, not your thing. Serve God, not your, you know, pre-planned, whatever, selfish thing that you are doing. Come of it. 
Naomi said there in verse 20 and 21, do not call me Naomi, call me Mara for the for the um, Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full. See, to her, what she had before was full. I went out full and the Lord brought, see, she said, I went out full. Okay, she thought she knew what she was doing. But see, now she's saying, the Lord brought me home again empty. Why didn't she say, the Lord sent me out full? No, no, that was the flesh. I, 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 I went out full. But God, when, when it's bad, so it's God's fault, right? I went out full, but now I'm empty because of God. We have to be careful. I went out full. I'm reading Ruth 1.21. I went out full and the Lord brought me home again empty. Why do you call me Naomi? Since the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has afflicted me. Very, very far from the truth. But that's what her circumstance was telling her. Because she didn't know God's plan for her life. All right. You will see it like Naomi if you are doing it in your own power. Until now, you've been doing your own thing. But now, God wants to tell his story through you. He's inviting you today to hear this message so that you can allow him to tell his story through you. He created you in the way that he knew he wanted you to be. Up till now, you've been doing your own thing, your own thing. So now start to allow him, allow him to step in. Verse 22, so Naomi returned and Ruth, the Moabites, her daughter-in-law with her, who returned from the country of Moab. Now they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. That's where God's story starts. They came to Bethlehem at the beginning of a harvest. She thought she was that the Lord brought her home empty, but God was preparing a harvest for her. She had no clue. They could have come at the end of the harvest. They could have come during the harvest. They could have come any time at all. But she said God brought her, you see, so God brought her to the beginning. You are entering your new life. You are, uh, I'm speaking to somebody. I hope somebody will hear it. Your life has been rubbish up till now. But God is taking you into a harvest period, a harvest time. Let God tell his story through you. Why didn't they come back at any other time? No, because now she, she was emptied out. So she now had to depend on God. And that's why God uh, uh, attached Ruth to her. This is God's story now. Therefore, it's got to be perfect. Listen to the conquering word. The emptiness was conquered. Because God knows tomorrow that you don't. You are coming into your harvest time. So let God lead you. Some people are still going through their empty time. But don't worry, you'll come out of it. When it is God's time, he will take you into your harvest. 
Don't always see your circumstance. See God. Let God lead you. Naomi had ended her story. For Naomi, her life was over. But God was just starting his own story in her life. Her, her husband died. Her two sons died. She wasn't empty. But did God finish with her? No. Don't judge your life according to your physical circumstance. I hope you are getting the picture now. When you are married to Jesus, you are living out the story of his life. Now, let us stick with Ruth for just a moment longer. Ruth came to Bethlehem with Naomi, to a foreign land, without friends, without family. She just followed Naomi because of love. The only reason she followed Naomi was love. And that's the conquering word. Love is always a conquering word. If you live in love, if you act in love, if you do everything in love, you are a conqueror. Love is the conquering word at any time. Because that's the only law God has given you to obey. You can't miss it with love. Because she loved her mother-in-law, who called herself bitter and empty, God led her to her place of plenty. I think that's rhyming somehow. She followed Naomi, who said she was empty. But God, through the love that Ruth showed her, led her to a place of plenty. Look at the plenty, not at the empty. God's story is always plenty. If you have an empty mindset, start to change it now. And start to have a plenty mindset. Is your cup half empty or half full? That's the point. You see, because this was God's story, he did not allow them to sneak back into Bethlehem. God had to announce their arrival because God had a plan that they knew nothing about. May Jesus, the word of God, announce your comeback. Marco Sarata. May Jesus, the word of God, announce your comeback today in his mighty name. We speak a comeback. We speak a return where people will rejoice because of your return. Let your suffering be a testimony to people. The people of the city had to know who Ruth was. Because Ruth was acting in love. That's why God could not allow her to sneak into Bethlehem. The people had to know about it. People had to talk about her right from the beginning. People had to say, what a child. Following her grandmother. Oh, look at Ruth. She didn't abandon her poor, empty mother-in-law. Oh, what a good young woman. Oh, God will bless you. That's what people talk when you do things like that, when you act in love. Oh, God bless you, young woman. Leaving your own family and following this Woman that is empty and bitter. Oh, God bless you. You see, God had to, to allow people to see Ruth and talk about Ruth so that she suddenly became the talk of town. And this was 
a, an obscure child. Some, it's, I, I said at the beginning, her story was nothing to write them about. She was a young widow, just following an empty mother-in-law. And because she did that in love, that's why God blessed her and led her to the harvest field of Boaz. Are you still considering whether to marry Jesus? God is showing you what he can do through this illustration. It's not about Ruth and Naomi. It's about you. Put yourself in the situation. Ask yourself what you would do. This is what is called divine connection and divine appointment. She came into Bethlehem at the beginning of the harvest, of the barley harvest. And somehow, what a coincidence, somehow she ended up in the harvest field of Boaz. Ask yourself again, was that really a coincidence? No, it wasn't. Chapter 2, verse 3 says, Then she left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. She happened. She, according to the, to the natural human eye, Oh, she just happened. No, she didn't just happen. Remember what, what Naomi said? It's God that brought them back, isn't it? She thought she was empty, but God was bringing her into a harvest. It's not a coincidence. She didn't just happen to be there. That was God led. The footsteps of the righteous are ordered by the Mosai God. She left and she went and she gleaned. And she just happened to come to the field of Boaz. Now, let's, let's look at, you know, go to four, verse 4 to verse 13. I'll just read it, then we talk about it because, yeah, we are getting, we need to round up. Let your heart be settled. Just receive. God is bringing you into your harvest. Forget about the emptiness. Forget about the lies of the past. Focus in your tomorrow. Allow God to lead you. All right. Verse 4. Now behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless you. These were very jovial, loving, kind, godly people. He was greeting his workers. It's, it's, it's such a, a nice way to, to, to greet people. Then Boaz said to his servants, who was in charge of the reapers, whose young woman is this? Immediately, immediately he noticed her. That's why you have to, to, to be different. You have to stand out. She was a foreigner to Israel. She didn't just stand out on the day they arrived because all the women started talking about her. Immediately Boaz came, he noticed her. He could have said, mm, who is that foreigner in my field? What is she doing here? It can happen both ways. Why is she in my field? But no, listen to how he even greeted his workers. He was a man of integrity, kind-hearted. Who is that young woman? Verse 6, so the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered and said, It is a young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. And she said, Please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came. And has continued from morning until now, though she rested a little in the house. Verse 8, then Boaz said to Ruth, 
you will listen, my daughter, will you not? Do not go to glean in another field, nor go from here, but stay close by my young women. Let your eyes be on the field which they reap <laughs> and go after them. Have I not commanded the young men not to touch you? And when you are thirsty, go to the vessel and drink from what the young men have drawn. So she fell on her face, bowed down to the ground and said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner? And Boaz, Boaz answered and said to her, It has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband and how you have left your father and your mother and the land of your birth and have come to a people whom you did not know before. The Lord repay your work. The Lord repay your work. And a full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. <laughs> then she said, Let me find favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and have spoken kindly to your maidservant, though I am not like one of your maidservants. When you have favor with God, you will have favor with man. If God is leading you, he will only lead you to a place of refreshment, a place of plenty, a place of harvest. Stop struggling. Just follow. Just follow. If we look at what we just read, Boaz noticed Ruth when she never thought anybody would notice her. She didn't go there to show off, oh, they will see what I can do as a foreign person in this country. Mm -mm. She just went to glean. Why? For herself and for mother, her mother-in-law. She didn't say, let me go and look for the for the field of the richest man in Israel. She acted in love, where probably love was not deserved. Because with how bitter and, 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 and empty Naomi was talking, <laughs> I don't think it was very, very easy to love her. You would tell her, oh, mom, it's not that bad. No, 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 my daughter. You don't know. It's really bad. I was full once. Da, 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 da. Ruth was selfless in her love for Naomi. She came to glean. But she became the wife of the boss. Your story is not over until it is over. Let God write your story. Let God act his story out through you. What do you think happened after she was married to, to Boaz? Was she still gleaning after the reapers? No, 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 no. 
she was now the administrator. <laughs> she was now the administrator of the wealth and the estate of Boaz. And you are still thinking, shall I follow Jesus? In his presence is fullness of joy. At his right and our pleasures forever and ever. Let me think about it. This is an illustration so that you can think and make up your mind. A poor foreigner came to glean, but she became the boss. She was now co heir with Boaz, the owner of the field. She was now family. She was no more foreigner. Now she was bearing his name, Mrs. Boaz. No more Ruth the Moabites. See? The identity changed. Now she's coming to the covenant. Boaz said it. Under whose wings, the God of Israel, under whose wings you've come for refuge. He alone will reward you. He wasn't speaking it because he thought I'm going to marry her. No, no, no. All that never happened before at that time. The point is, even as God is raising you up, don't think that everybody will be happy. Tongues will still be wagging. That's what we are talking about. Don't look at the circumstance. Focus on Jesus. Receive his word. His word is the conquering word. People will still call you a gold digger. Oh, look at that foreigner that has come to take from us. It's, it, it happens everywhere. There will still be some upclass lady who had her eyes, her family. In those days, they used to marry families, you know. There would have been some family, some upclass family like Boaz. Oh, my daughter, I'm going to, you know, make my daughter marry Boaz. So that girl now will, will be looking at you with hateful eyes. Are you going to look at that or are you going to thank God for where he has brought you to? There will be even your own, your own inferiority complex that will be Talking to you. Your flesh. Your worst enemy. Oh Ruth. You know you don't deserve this. You shouldn't be married to Boaz. You are too inferior for this kind of life. That's the devil talking. Don't listen to it. You don't deserve it. Yes you don't deserve it. God gave it to you. It's a reward for you loving your empty mother-in-law. That's your reward. Even Boaz said, said it there. Verse 12 of, of chapter 2. The Lord repay your work and a full reward. There's nothing you do in love for God in the name of Jesus that will not come with a reward. Let people say what they like. The Lord will repay your work and he will give you a full reward because you have come to take refuge under his wings. He didn't say because you, you came to, to some city that is harvesting. No, no, no. It's the Lord. You came under his wings. Under his protection. He will lead you. He will guide you. You don't deserve anything. That's what I keep saying. Jesus did it all. It's all about him. Do you deserve to be called the living Jesus? No, you don't. 
But he gave you his name. Go in my name. That's why you are the living Jesus. That's why Ruth was Mrs. Boaz. Did she deserve it? No. But because she acted in love, she did everything in love. She conquered. She conquered all the poverty, all the shame, the, the shame of widowhood or whatever people would have been telling her, oh, you married and your husband is dead and all that. The bitterness and the half full cups. She conquered it in love, because of love. Selfless love. She didn't love Naomi for anything. So if somebody says you don't deserve to be who you are or to have what you have or to step out of obscurity and walk into your harvest, tell them, yes, I don't deserve it because it's about Jesus, not about me. I'm answering the name of Jesus. I'm not answering my name. You don't deserve to answer his name. But Psalm 118 tells me it is the Lord's doing, so it is marvelous in my eyes. Do I deserve it? No. But it's the Lord's doing, so I'm enjoying it. It's marvelous. It's wonderful. If you read Psalm 126, it says, Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. Let God lead you to your harvest field. Now that we are in Christ, we must learn to grow in him. Ruth didn't just become Mrs. Boaz and go back to being the, the widow from Moab. She had to learn to live now as Mrs. Boaz. So when you come in Christ, when you accept Jesus into your life, you are a new creation. So you have to learn to let go of the old ways and learn to walk in the new. Those who don't know that you have entered a new life will still think that you are the old. You have to let them know that you have crossed over. You are no more the person they think you are. You have to learn to grow. You are in it now, walk in it, grow in it. Don't let your inferiority, inferiority complex steal you away from your God-given destiny. Oh, I'm not worthy. Oh, I don't deserve it. Nobody deserves anything. All we deserve is to hang on the cross. But Jesus hung there already for you. And he... He died your death and gave you his life. He qualifies you. He qualifies. The root was qualified to be an Israelite, to be Mrs. Boaz, to come into a covenant that was never hers in the first place. Let's look. go back to Colossians to conclude this thing. I hope you are learning. I hope you are receiving your blessing that is by grace, not by merit. It's not by merit. So, let's go back to where we started from and round it up. Colossians 1, 10 to 12. It says... Or let me, yeah, okay, let's just do 10 to 12. That you may walk. So once you come into the new, if once you receive Jesus, the word of God into your heart, by the spirit of God, it's a mystery. A, a full grown man will not come physically and live in your heart. He is spirit because he is God. So he can do that. You welcome him, you invite him. So Colossians 1 from verse 10 says that you may walk 
worthy of the Lord. Now that you are Mrs. Boaz, now you are the living Jesus, learn to walk worthy of his name. Everything you do now must be fully pleasing to him. And you must bear fruit to show that you are now Mrs. Boaz and not Ruth the Moabites. You are now the living Jesus, not the one that was living in sin. Colossians 1 verse 10. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful. That means continuously bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So you learn this new life. You learn to live it. It's not once saved, always saved. No, no, it's a walk. It's a daily walk. Daily signing on. Jesus, I'm yours. I was yours yesterday. Today I sign on again. And once you do that, verse 11, strengthened with all might, because in his presence you will receive that power to do the impossible to do the the not obvious things because it's a mystery it's, it's out of this world it's more powerful than you strengthen god empowers you with all might according to his glorious power not your strength you don't have it According, according to his glorious power. Naomi's life was a write-off. But God started his story in her life. It has to be according to him. Because on your own, you are empty. You are bitter. You have nothing to write home about. And he says, for all patience... And long suffering with joy. So now, no matter what happens, you live in joy, knowing that your circumstance is not determining determining how you feel. Your 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 attitude is not determined by your circumstance. And that's why verse twelve, giving thanks to the Father. Who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light? He qualified you. You you don't deserve it. You couldn't do it. You were bitter and angry and forsaken and empty. But God said, okay, now that you are empty, let me show you that once you come into my light, that I can redeem your time. I can rescue you. I can deliver you from all those nightmares and whatever frustra- frustrating thoughts you've been having. Let me do it. He's the one who qualifies us. On our own, we are not worthy. We don't deserve it. We cannot do it. And so I'm speaking to Ruth now. God has put you where you are. Are you going to live for him? Mrs. Boaz, are you now going to say, oh, finally I have arrived. Now I'm where I never thought I will be. And then you forget where you were until God brought you to where you are. Are you going to live for him? Are you going to live worthy of his name? Are you going to bear fruit so that others can benefit from your position? That you never would have gone there on your own. Are you going to let your story 
encourage others. Mrs. Boaz. Think about it. It's not about Ruth. It's about you. Peter says, make your calling an election sure. You have been called into this thing. If you read 2 Peter 1.10, you, you can write it down and look at it later. Now that you are in this, now that you have been called out of obscurity, of emptiness, of, of nothing, of being nothing, he says, make your calling an election. You have been qualified for this. You have been elected for this. You have been called out for this. Therefore, be even more diligent than those who are not walking in this grace and favor and privilege. Your life is a privilege. Instead of allowing it to puff you up, be diligent. Let others benefit from all the blessings that God has brought you into. It's not your doing. It's the Lord's doing. He brought you into your harvest. Don't forget those who are not walking in this grace yet. Everyone has his time. So going back to Colossians 1, verse 21 to 23. Colossians 1, 21 to 23 says, And you who once were alienated, once you were foreigner, and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled. It is his work, not your own. You were alienated, you were foreigner, you were an enemy in your wicked mind, in your wicked works. You are an enemy of God. He qualified you and he reconciled you to himself in the body of his flesh through death. Jesus had to die so that you can live. To present you holy and blameless. On your own, you can't do it. Jesus did it. I'm reading Colossians 1, verse 22. He reconciled you in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. So now covered in his blood, your sins are gone. <laughs> That's the joy of being a Christian. Boaz told Ruth that you will get a reward because you've come for refuge. See, when you are in Christ, he takes over. All your sins, wicked works, he wipes them away. And now you are blameless, completely blameless in his sight. And above reproach in his sight. He can't see anything wrong with you. Because he did it and his works are perfect. If indeed, you see, listen to this. If indeed you continue. Not because you came in once. He told you, welcome home. It's done. You are here now. And then you say, okay, now let me go back. Mm -mm. then you have gone out of the, from the place of covering. You are no more covered when you leave his presence. That's why Colossians 1.23 says, If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven of which I, Paul, became a minister. 
this message is for everyone, every creature under heaven. Angels don't need this. This is for you. Angels are sent to help you to, to be able to continue to stay in faith and walk in this way and be grounded and steadfast. God release his angels. The moment you say, Jesus, I accept you. Heaven is, uh, is, is uh, you know, serving you every time you turn around. You have, you have to know the privilege. You have to know the power. You have to know who you are. In Christ. It's not a joke. That's why you cannot be forced. To do it. But once you know. That's why this word has to be preached. So that you have. Enough information. To make up your mind with. And once you've made up your mind. Stay there. Continue. In the faith. Remain grounded and be steadfast and never be moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard. This gospel is for everyone. You are privileged to hear it, hear it today. And the word says, if today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. And so, now that you are in Christ, now that you say to Jesus, yes, I do, <laughs> he is in you and you are in him. You are, from this moment on, like Ruth, executing your husband's authority in everything you do because you now bear his name. You have power beyond power. You must remember that. Ruth will no longer go back to glean. She is now an executive member of this kingdom business, of the business of Boaz. She cannot go back to Glynn because she's now an executive member. Are you in Christ or not? If you are in Christ, then you are in kingdom business to go about your father's business, go about your husband's business, don't go back to glean. They say, what is enough for the wise? So walk in the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of the conquering word. A word is enough for the wise. If you are wise, walk in that wisdom. And the people of the Lord said, Amen. And that will be our prayer for today. Colossians 1 verse 9. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. And to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That's our prayer. You've heard this message. You've made up your mind to say, yes, Lord, I do. Let us now pray that we walk in this wisdom. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, Paul is saying to the Colossians, we do not cease to pray for you. So I'm standing with you. If you have just accepted this word in your heart, this conquering word, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, King of the Jews, God of the whole earth, 
if you have just accepted him, we want to stand with you and pray for you. And to ask the Father that you may be filled, that you may be filled. It is spiritual. You have to be filled. It's not brain knowledge. That you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. You want to pray for a spiritual understanding of what it means to be married to Jesus. To answer his name. To walk in his light. To know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And the more you walk with him, the more you understand these things. He is spirit and you must worship him in spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come to you this morning by the power of your Holy Spirit. Ha, ha, ha. Is called holy because there's another spirit that is not holy. Our God is holy. If you don't worship this God, so you have a spirit that is not holy. Just remember that. So if you accept Jesus, you are accepting the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of Jesus, the power of God, the creator, the possessor of heaven and earth and everything seen and unseen, visible and invisible, known and unknown. And so we come to you, Father, almighty Father, by the power of your Holy Spirit, in the matchless name of Jesus, Father, we just thank you for this word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, word of God, because you are the conquering word. In you, we are more than conquer us because you have already conquered for us. Thank you from taking us away from feeling like Naomi to being like Ruth married to Boaz. Help us to understand these illustrations and to remember that it's not about Ruth, it's not about Naomi, it's about our relationship one-on-one, -on -one, a personal relationship with you, Jesus. And so I pray for everyone who has accepted you, who has agreed that they were foreigners, they were, they, they were wicked, they were sinners until they heard this word. And this word has washed them. And they say, Lord Jesus, forgive me because I have been a sinner up till now and I realize that only you can forgive my sin and wash them away. Thank you for qualifying me to be called your own. Thank you for your blood, Lord Jesus. Thank you for reconciling me, taking me out of darkness into your light. I want to worship you all the days of my life. Be my Lord, be my Savior, be my God. Redeem the time that I have lost in ignorance. Thank you for taking me into my harvest season. Thank you for washing away my past full of ignorance and lies and taking me into your marvelous light where I can see. Tie me to yourself, Lord Jesus, and never, ever let me be parted from you. Let me continue in this faith, never moving away. Let me be grounded in you let me be cemented in you. Let me be one in you. Because I have chosen to say yes to you. You are in me and I am in you. Never to be separated again in all eternity. Holy Father, thank you for releasing your word 
into the earth realm. Thank you, word of God, for agreeing to come for us, becoming man for man. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, and reconciling me back to the Father. Sweet Holy Spirit, we thank you for revealing these mysteries to us. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for teaching us, for helping us, for counseling us. Thank you that you are always here. And because you are in us, we are more than conquerors because we have the conquering word. Blessed be your most holy name, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name, Lord. Get your elements sense for the communion. God never ever ceases to bless us. If you don't get it one way, he'll give it to you another way. It's a privilege to know Jesus. It's communion time. Let your heart be joyful. In his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. You see, the beginning was turbulent. But we came to the end and Jesus, to Jesus be all the praise. To Jesus be all the praise. The enemy lost and has always lost, but he doesn't learn. That's why you cannot look at what is happening. Look to Jesus. All right. And that's what we are doing now. Remembering him. No matter what happens, he is Lord. He is Lord. Look to him, not at the circumstance. That's how, about 2,000 years ago, he came physically to earth. Did God not just, I don't know the English I should use. God came into the earth realm as a human being. Just, just you think about it. If you try to use your brain, it, 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 it's like, how can? But you forget that in Acts of Apostles, that people were sacrificing to, to Paul. They thought the gods have come down. Yeah, you believe that one, but you don't believe that Jesus is God that came down. All right. Father, forgive our ignorance in Jesus' name. Release your light. You say that a people who lived in darkness will see a great light. You died for your people. Let them see that great light. Take away the, the dark black veil that is covering their faces. You tore the veil from top to bottom. And yet they still go and stick their heads in the ground like, Father, forgive. So, what we call the Last Supper, when Jesus, before he was crucified, during that Passover of Passovers, see, everything was on time, because Jesus is the Passover lamb. It was just another Passover. His disciples didn't get it, even though he was telling them, he took bread, the Passover bread. He, he gave thanks to the Father. He broke it. 
and gave it to the disciples and said, said, take this all of you, eat from it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. They would have been dumbfounded. They would have been confused. You know what saved them? They obeyed. Obedience is so vital. Don't try to understand everything. You haven't got the brain. It's not in your brain anyway. You sit at a table with a fellow, somebody you thought was a fellow human being like you. And he told you, this is my body. Take it and eat. And you just do it. It's because they saw something, even though they did not understand. They saw something in Jesus that just made them obey. May you receive the grace to obey today in Jesus' name. Amen. When supper ended, he took the cup in the same way. He gave thanks to the Father. And he gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this all of you and drink of it. This is my blood which will be shed for you. The blood of the new and everlasting covenant. So that sins may be forgiven. And he said, do this in memory of me. Lord Jesus, thank you for what you did for us. Thank you for giving up yourself for us. As you asked us, do this in memory of me. That's just what we are doing. And even though physically we see bread and we see wine, we know that this is beyond that. And so, Holy Spirit, we ask you, like you did right from Genesis, you hovered over something that was muddled and dark and had no shape or form, and you turned it into something perfect. Let your spirit... Descend on these gifts, Lord, and let them become the very body and the very blood of our Lord, our King, our Christ, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Take an eight cents, the body of Christ. The blood of Jesus. You have every reason to be joyful in the Lord. He alone can do such great and marvelous things. Beyond human understanding that God should become man to come and save man from his sin. Even when man did not know him. God is love. He doesn't just love you. The word God is synonymous with love. He is love. And he loves you. And he did not mind dying for you. 
So he qualifies you by his power in his love to be his child. There's nothing you can do. If you agree with him, you just step in. That's it. That's Christianity. You agree and you step in. You cross over. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this divine moment. Thank you for allowing us to step into these mysteries. Thank you for being our Father and allowing us to call you Father. Thank you that God Almighty should be the Father of mankind. Thank you for creating us in your image and for breathing, releasing your breath into us so that we can live the life that you created us to live. On our own, we can do nothing. And so we say thank you, Jesus, for coming and doing it and finishing it on the cross. And you declared it is finished. And you went to hell and you disarmed Satan. And you came out victorious, a conqueror. That's why we can celebrate the conquering word today. We celebrate you, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you are in us and we are in you and nothing, no angels, no demon, no height, no depths, nothing in all creation can separate us from your love. Thank you for loving us so much beyond understanding. We receive it by faith and we say, Holy Spirit, help us to remain in this faith, to be grounded and to be steadfast and to make this calling sure, make this election sure. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. We've come to the end of today's service. Sense. Well done. You will receive your reward if you do it in the name of Jesus. There is a reward. You will receive a full reward. That's what was declared over over Ruth, and I declare it over you right now in Jesus' name. You will receive your full reward. Nothing can take your reward for, for serving God away from you. No, 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 no. Satan is a liar. He's <laughs> a liar, a big one. He makes things look different from what they should be. Storm on the sea when when all, all we want is to is to save lives. He brings storm on the sea. We thank God for peace. All right. The usual announcement. Remember the weekly service. Don't do it once a week. Live in it. Walk in it. Continually. We just read that. Be grounded in it. That's the only way you can receive the full reward. If you only come to take and run, that's all you get. Bits and pieces, you are not in the covenant. But if you are in the covenant, then your harvest is sure. Simple as that. Every Tuesday, 6 p.m. London time, UK time, Youth Bible Study for 30 minutes every Tuesday. After that, 7 p.m. Bible study for the whole family, for the, you know, for everyone. And we have the same Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday by 7 p.m. Bible study. Come and eat the word. That's how you will be a conqueror in your life. What we are talking about here is not taught in schools. 
you have to be special to know this. Ruth had to be special to be where her kind were not. You see? This, these things are deep. Anyway. On Thursday night, 9 p.m. London time, UK time. Is the prayer mantle, the altar of prayer, where you come and bring your petition. You bring your request to the Lord. Lord, here am I. This is my family. This is my this and that. I need your help with it. You learn to talk to your father. On Friday night, 10 p.m., we have what we call the hour, the fire hour of prayer. The fire hour of prayer. You just come and bask in the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let him do a work in you. You are gold, put in fire. What do you think happens? At the end, you come out pure as simple as that. So you allow God to do a work in you. It's not, it's not an altar of petition. It's an altar where you just come and say, Lord, transform me. Reveal to me who I am in you. And bring me to where you need me to be. So you surrender to the Lord. And he will do what he needs to do. Okay, that being said, remember, Jesus is calling for investors. We are talking about kingdom business here. When Ruth became Mrs. Boaz, she had to learn to, to work at that level, at that executive level. She was no more begging. She was no more gleaning. She could raise the standard of her mother-in-law so you know that this is kingdom business jesus said don't you know i have to go about my father's business this is your father's business this is your husband's business so it's not their thing it's your thing so invest in it that's why jesus is calling for investors we are not asking for people who are just throwing in a coin. No, no, no. Make up your mind. It's not by force. But remember, there is a reward. Yes, yes, you got it. You have bills to pay, and the church has bills to pay. Jesus had a ministry that he ran. And remember, people did it with him. Judas carried the money back even though he he used to pinch from it but we know it will come out so don't worry about it you do what your heart tells you to do and everyone will receive his and or her reward okay you just invest in kingdom business and let your full reward come from god under whose wings you have come to find refuge. Amen. I think that's it from me today. I love you. But Jesus loves you more. Serve him. He has the conquering word. I release over you. And declare over you. That the blood of Jesus. Is your refuge. That the light. Of the Holy Spirit. Is your shield. And the love of of the Father is a fire wall of protection around you. No evil can penetrate that fire wall. No pestilence, no plague remain within the walls of that holy fire. Give Jesus the glory and you will receive the benefit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a lovely week. I will see you soon again. Get connected. Stay connected. Mwah. Bye for today.